Hey, what's up guys? This is me again, Ayub from the Web Dev Cave channel. In this video, we're gonna see a concept that is commonly misunderstood and frequently used in the wrong place, especially among beginners and those who are in an intermediate level in the domain, which is software architecture. It's been always my goal to simplify and sometimes even oversimplify concepts that sounds very confusing and intricate at the first time. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce software architecture and try to give you enough information and detail about it to either continue and dive in or maybe you just want to encloud the area of the concepts in the big picture and kind of see where it fits. Also, I'm going to talk about architectural patterns and how they relate to software architecture itself. I mean, are they the same? Are they different? Does it even matter? We will find out in a few. After that, I'm gonna briefly list and give a simple explanation with some graphs about each pattern. And of course, I'm going to answer the common question that confuses many, many, many developers, especially those who are in the phase of transitioning from beginners to the intermediate level in software development, which is what is the difference between architecture and design pattern? We are going to see that this is not the right question to ask actually, because what developers mean in this question when they say architecture is not actually architecture. Finally, we're going to conclude with some insights and additional resources if you want to get deeper in the matter. So what are we waiting for let's dive in first off let me set the context here so that it would be easier for you to understand what i will be talking about building software is not just coding right and there is nothing new in this statement ironically most developers fail to keep this in their minds when it comes to building software and this will eventually translate to a drawback in creating the software system. So building software is a complex activity that comprises many aspects of which coding is only a small portion. And as the title of the video implies, we're going to talk about a very important aspect in software engineering and development, which is software architecture. But before that, let me show you what the big picture of software engineering and development looks like in my big head. I'm kidding. I don't have a big head and I know I'm terrible at making jokes. Anyway, let's discuss what is happening here. So creating software involves a lot of activities which are all important and necessary. Here the green box represents the whole process of software creation. Each yellow box represents a very important phase. A rose shows how these phases build up on each other. And each arrow represents an output from the previous phase and at the same time it is the input to the next phase. So requirements engineering deals with business requirements and gathering information from stockholders that we will use to build the software. Next, we have analysis, the process of taking all the information gathered and converting it to a meaningful form that will help software engineers start working on the real stuff. After that, we have the design phase. This is the phase in which the architecture of the software is defined and documented. And next comes the fun part, the phase most developers love, building and developing the software. And just to note here, always remember that each phase requires some sort of input in order to do its job, okay? Following we have testing, acceptance testing, and if the system is good to go, we're ready to deploy. And of course maintenance and keeping the system up to date and aligned with business requirements is essential. So this is just an overview, you know, a 20,000 foot view of the process of software creation. Now, let's zoom in the part that includes the design and development phases to see what happens there. So here we have the design phase in which we define the architecture of the software. On this level, we find architectural patterns, quality attributes, messaging, etc. All this stuff should be determined and in some cases we even define how they are going to manifest in code along with constraints. All this stuff represents the input to the development phase, in which we find coding paradigms, design patterns, tooling, programming languages, and all the related stuff. So far, so good. Now, let's get to the essence of this video. Because the design output is the input of the development phase, the first thing that developers should care about and actually focus on is the output of the design phase, which is the architecture of the software. And before we talk about what is involved in software architecture and the important parts of it, let me give you a definition of software architecture that you need to keep in mind for the rest of the video. And if it doesn't make sense, just reread it again and keep it in mind. It will help a lot to easily understand software architecture and the things I will be talking about. So here it is. Software architecture is how the defining components of a software system are organized and assembled, how they communicate with each other, and the constraints the whole system is ruled by. Let me repeat, 
Software architecture is how the defining components of a software system are organized and assembled. And note here that I said organized and assembled, not how they are built, okay? How they communicate with each other and the constraints the whole system is ruled by. So if you think about it, software architecture involves three major parts. The first part is how the defining components of a software system are organized and assembled. And by defining, I mean the big, major, significant components. And by organized and assembled, I mean the overall structure of the components. And this is actually what most folks in the field mean when they say architecture. They mean the overall structure of the system. But it's not. Software architecture is more than that. This first part is referred to as the architecture pattern of the system. The second thing in the definition is how they communicate with each other, which are the interfaces through which the components interact. In other words, the APIs of the individual components as well as the whole system, if that is needed. This is what I meant by the messaging mechanism in the previous representation. Lastly, we have the constraints the whole system is ruled by. These constraints are the non-functional attributes of the system or the quality attributes. Some developers call them the LETs of the system. For example, scalability, resolvability, resilience, adaptability, etc. I mean, does the system need to have high performance? Does it need to be secure, scalable, adaptable? And it's really important to respect these qualities because this part, I mean quality attributes, affects the architectural pattern choice and eventually impacts the development phase in many aspects. So now I think you have started to see that software architecture is more than just the overall structure of the system or the architectural pattern, right? However, because the architectural pattern is probably the most important part in software architecture, most developers just use the two terms interchangeably. So what is this architectural pattern I'm talking about? As I said before, the architectural pattern is the overall structure. The scaffolding upon which your code will be built and developed. Some examples of architectural patterns are the layered architecture, which is common in web applications. Also, another common one is microservices architectural pattern. These patterns dictate what the system will be composed of and kind of define the granularity of the components. And by that, I mean, will be there few major components that will in turn consist of smaller components like the layered architecture? Or will the system be composed of relatively small independent components from the very beginning, like microservices pattern? So now you see why this is important for the development phase. We can't just start coding without knowing the architectural pattern. Just like the mason cannot start piling up bricks without knowing what shape they will form. What is the ultimate height, the thickness, and the rules they should follow? But if he knows this information, he may want to choose different building material according to the architect's specifications and needs. I think you got the point. Knowing the architecture pattern will help us make good decisions in the development phase. And some of the important decisions are the design patterns for the components and subcomponents. And this leads us to clarify the difference between architecture or better yet, the architectural pattern versus the design pattern. What is the difference? Well, I'm kind of getting this feeling that by now you have probably inferred what is the difference between them based on what we have seen and talked about. But let's finalize that. Architectural patterns deal with the high level, universal, overall structure of the system, okay? More specifically, as we've seen in the definition, they deal with how components are organized and assembled. Design patterns, however, which exist in a different scope, by the way, the development scope, they deal with how components are built. Design patterns deal with a much lower level. They go deeper into components and dictate how specific components should be built, okay? Now, I know I said architectural patterns and design patterns exist in different scopes. That's true, but it doesn't mean they have nothing to do with each other. Developers have some sort of freedom into choosing what kind of design pattern they want to implement. But most of the times, the architectural pattern chosen affects the choice of the design pattern. Sometimes certain design patterns are impossible to implement for some architectural patterns. So there you have it. The difference has been clarified and no more confusion. All right, so before I conclude, 
let me list for you the various architectural patterns that are out there. When it comes to architectural patterns, there are two levels of classification. The first is more of a high level of classification which categorizes architectural patterns into monolithic architectures, surface-based architectures, and distributed architectures. These classes comprise in turn types of architectural patterns that you might have heard of before, like the layered architecture pattern, microservices architectural patterns, and the event-driven pattern. Let's talk about them briefly, and in next videos, I will address each pattern in much more detail by explaining how the pattern works, its advantages and limitations, the common pitfalls, as well as resources to learn more about each pattern in case you want to go deeper into it. Let me start with the most common architectural pattern, the layered architecture pattern, or which is commonly known as the interior pattern. This pattern lends itself towards a monolithic architecture at the core. So the layered architectural pattern is the most used one in software systems and you've most likely seen it before. Put simply, layered software systems advocate the separation of concerns. In this pattern, you'll find the software divided into the presentation layer, business, persistence, and infrastructure layers. In this pattern, related functionalities are grouped together in closed modular layers. The system achieves its goal through the communication of these layers via well-defined interfaces. Next, we have the microservices architectural pattern. This is a service-based architecture, and it is not the same as the common architectural pattern service-oriented architecture. Both of them deal with services, but they are quite different. Anyway, microservices pattern is characterized by independently evolvable and deployable units, and the system doesn't break by adding or removing these units and these units form the whole system by some sort of coordination. Another well-known architectural pattern is the event-driven pattern, which is a distributed architectural pattern, and it consists of multiple distributed computing or event processing units that are coordinated and coupled using one of the two topologies, the mediator topology or the broker topology. This pattern has an asynchronous nature and it is used for applications that need to be highly scalable and dynamic. And as you noticed, I didn't put a graph because event-driven systems could have many structures depending on the topology used. The next architectural pattern is the microkernel pattern, which is also referred to as the plugin pattern. This architectural style has two major components, the core system, which is meant to have the minimal functionalities and the plugins that are used to customize the software and add features to it. And as you've probably inferred, this pattern has a monolithic nature, but it's really flexible. Some applications of this pattern are web browsers, text editors, and of course, operating systems from which this pattern took its name. All right, two more to go. Here is a common one, the service-oriented architecture. This pattern is used for large enterprise, very complex software systems. Unlike microservices, services in this pattern are coarse-grained. That means they are bigger in scope, more abstract, and they are built upon each other. Service-oriented architecture, or SOA for short, is used for integrating heterogeneous software components, and it has a much wider scope than other patterns. And because of that, you'll find many implementations of this pattern. Okay, the last one is the space-based architecture, which is sort of hybrid pattern that takes advantage of microservices, event-driven, and some computer science concepts. And actually, it is inspired by the top of space implementation, which is used in concurrent distributed systems. Basically, it works through distributed caching, which is an in-memory data grid that is shared among multiple processing units, which are independent from each other. These processing units are managed by a middleware that has four core components, a messaging grid, a data grid, a processing grid, and a deployment manager. This is a very interesting pattern that is known for its elasticity and high scalability attributes. And actually, the cloud is one implementation of it. So these are the various architectural patterns in a nutshell. And of course, there are other ones. Okay. We have seen a lot in this video and I think it's time to conclude. So let me suggest some resources you can check to understand software architecture and architectural patterns if you wanna go deeper in this area. All right, I'm not gonna overwhelm you here. So I'm gonna recommend two really great books. First is Software Architecture in Practice the third edition. This book lends itself towards a more abstract guide. It explains software architecture concepts in a very clear and easy to follow and understand way. It also talks about best practices in software architecture and it deals with concepts from a pragmatic standpoint. 
Second, which is the best of the best, in my opinion, of course. And if you want to be a software architect, this is a must read. It's a series of books, actually. It consists of four volumes, and it's sort of the Bible for software architecture, if you will. Pattern-oriented software architecture. I know it's an exhaustive guide, but make sure to have it there available to you whenever you feel confused. I'm sure it will save the day. All right. Last thing I want to say is that there is no best architectural pattern. There are only best architectural patterns for specific cases or types of software systems. Also, each architectural pattern is characterized by certain attributes that we find in the set of quality attributes so part of choosing the quote-unquote best architectural pattern is looking for architectural patterns that match the quality attributes you're looking for well that's it a brief intro to software architecture i hope this video was useful and don't forget to subscribe till the next video stay tuned